Hey guys, how's it going, Companion? Today I want to talk about some of the big implications that really aren't talked about. One of the most relevant cards, not only in Arena, but also in Constructed, like the full package coming out of League of Explorers, is actually Keeper of Uldemon. Keeper of Uldemon is considered one of the best cards in Arena for Paladin, at least in the common slot, and it is a card that has made literally every type of Paladin deck list. People are playing it in mid-range Paladin, people are playing in aggressive Paladin, people are playing in control Paladin, people are playing this card in secret Paladin, some people, even some of the tournaments that I cast today, uh, are playing two of them in the Secret Paladin. So what's going on behind this card? It doesn't really look that impressive. And it, it really took a lot of playing, a lot of experimenting, a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth to realize why the card is so successful. So the way you have to look at it is um, most of the time when you actually play this card, you play it on your own minion. Uh, most people, when they first looked at Keeper of Uldaman, they thought of it like an Alder Peacekeeper, where, you know, if your opponent had a big thing, you have this thing to deal with a big thing. And yeah, it, it does that. It can do that. Uh, perhaps in Arena, it's used more in that way than it is in Constructed. In Constructed, very frequently, you use it on just a 1-1 one, one guy. And uh, you might think that's a bit of a waste, but it's really not. You know, when you include a card in your deck like Alder Peacekeeper, um, usually you save it for the late game, but sometimes you have to play it because Paladin is is a class that you have to continuously be winning to actually eventually win the game. So you often just have to play a Peacekeeper on turn three, targeting nothing. And in that case, it's really bad. But Keeper of Uldemont, if you have like a 1-1 one, one minion and you play this targeting your own 1-1 one, one minion, you get a plus two, plus two buff, which is like paying four mana for the stats of a 5-6, which is basically like the best four drop in the game, but better because there's no actual downside like Pit Lord and the 2-2 two, two is often going to have a charge effect that you add on top of your 1-1 one, one because it often can attack immediately. Uh, especially in Arena when people are playing a lot of 2-3 minions, uh, being able to buff your 1-1 one, one guy with the Keeper of Uldemon, kill it, and then have a tempo uh, board, it's just, it's just insane sometimes. And the flexibility just makes it really amazing. I think even though the card is considered one of the best in Arena, it might actually be slightly better than that. It might actually be the best common card for Paladins in Arena, but you know, the verdict is out on these type of cards at least for a few weeks uh, until after their release because they, they require a lot of testing to really kind of equate them uh, among the other cards that are also very powerful. And of course, Paladin has quite a few of those in Arena. It works in, in like Secret Paladin because you often do have a lot of 1-1s one and sometimes um, if your opponent plays a big minion, you can just play this card and continue your face push because, well, they're no longer playing a big minion when you transform it into a 3-3. So the way to look at it is, you know, a card like Alder Peacekeeper was often considered like the best three in the game. And now we have, you know, Keeper of Uldemon, which is a, which is a four mana card, but the Alder Peacekeeper was considered the best three in the game, but it's only really the case when you're losing or when it's like a marginal situation. When you're winning, it's kind of bad. Um, the only bad case for Keeper of Uldaman is when there is nothing on the board. And that really is quite unlikely. It's more likely that the board is clear going into turn four in Arena because people kind of do a lot of back and forth games and there's not that many sticky death rattle minions. But in Constructed, you know, you're playing garbage like Haunted Creeper. You have two muster for battle in every Paladin neck you ever play. The chance that the board is completely clear when your turn four starts and you have a Keeper of Uldum on your hand is basically not realistic. So it's going to get that ridiculous four drop value every single time. But, you know, there are very dynamic ways where you have to use this card. It is, it is kind of like a harder card to understand. You need some experience, you need some practice. And today, I mostly just want to show you guys some of the moments where the card works and some of the moments where it doesn't really work all that well. So you guys can be, you know, more understanding of how the card works and the next time you get a chance to play with it or draft it you'll be just that little bit better at using it so check out the clips hope you guys enjoy hope you guys appreciate the card a little bit more and i'll see you guys tomorrow i'm gonna keep the keeper Maybe I shouldn't have killed the keeper. 
This play is pretty horrible too. That's good. The light protects me. Mm. That kind of sucks. Why? Well, we can't really smork from the start of the game. It's, you can't play that way. Okay, you can, but you usually have to go first and need a better hand. Get down! Knowledge is power, and I know a lot. None may steal our Weapon ready. Weapon ready. This is my <laughs> Mm. It's a bit bad. Ready. This is my Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. This flame strike's pretty brutal. None may steal our secrets. Not in my house. This is the most anti flame strike play I have. If he flame strikes a counter with dark skill, then he's fucked. I serve the fire lord. Not in my house. This is my responsibility. Not in my house. Reporting for duty. Yeah, shielding the 3 1 is like a trap. That's lethal. Easy peasy. He has like a shattered sun, I just straight up lose the game, so I don't really want to deal with that. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck. Now that's bad. It's not Doomsayer bad, but that is the second worst one, I believe. Oh no, a sheep would have been worse. Third worst. Oh, that's pretty sad. Should have played it before I popped the shredder. <laughs> He's time for a little well, I couldn't do that. Reporting for duty. It's a deal. That sucks. Fuck it, let's play in a consecrate. I mean, even if he has kings, it's not the end of the world. Okay, that's pretty bad. Behold the might of storm. Oh, give me a fucking break, dude. I think I'll 
Just one. Damn. Alright. Can't take six damage, so. Alright, let's hope we don't get too unlucky. That's not too bad. If I attack that there, the only nightmare scenario is this hitting there. That is really unlikely. Okay. I think the Frost Elemental is better if he plays like one huge minion. Yeah, I think I'd rather play this shit on this minion because it can't be targeted. And draw one card. That's his play. <laughs> okay. It's a good draw for me. None may steal our seeds. I smell. That sucks. Reporting for duty. Okay. Okay, I still win. Okay, that was tough. Keeper of Uldaman. Almost did it, but not quite. We have both weapons. I think I'm just gonna keep it. Happy Feast of Wintervale, champion. Fuck your Feast of Wintervale. They're rated number one. Reporting for duty. That's surprising, because I don't think they are. I think Mage is number one. Reporting for duty. Try I'm making this attack because if he has Consecrate and I attack with that, Consecrate clears the board. If uh, he has True Silver and I attack with that, True Silver kills two minions. Let's just get this liability off the board, honestly. Watch this. Someone call for the doctor. Dude Slayer equals liability. If this guy wants to pop out some dudes from this stage on in the game, I'm totally fine with that. Oh look, he had Consecrate. Turns out it was a liability. Squire, attend me. Ready, sir. Eh, three damage. Yeah, fine. Watch this. Get down. I've got a hit. That's all right. That can be a little bit bad. I will not be trifled with. Sure, line them up. You're in 
trouble now. Turns out keeping both weapons is a really big deal there. Follow the rules. Uh oh, bro. Oh shit. That sucks. Reporting for duty. Okay. I fight dirty. None may steal All right, we still have some work to do. None may steal For the for the spire to battle. Liz vs. True Silver and Kings. What do we have that does one damage directly, though? We also kind of lose versus the Taunt, but if I play the Blackwing Technician, we still kind of lose versus that same Taunt. I think we should probably armor up. Show them no mercy. Needs a Freeze or a Taunt. This doesn't do it. One. <laughs> we just beat three paladins with this deck. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, fuck it. Let's keep the Tomb Pillager. Coin a bomber into a dude. Seems pretty bad. Reporting for duty. Could blade flurry, but I can't really play much after it. Uh, so weak. If I had one more mana, it would have been good. Didn't have one more mana is the problem. Thank you. Missed one face damage. Well, I wanted to keep my weapon full because I had the Goblin Auto Barber. So. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call that a misplay. What you want? Hope he doesn't have a divine shield for that. Someone called Wow. He healed his own face. Weird. Here we go. Careful. Yeah, Consecrate is pretty real and stuff. I think it's still my best chance to play the Drake. It's not too bad. Take five. Okay. Are you guys really having problems watching the stream right now? My broadcast stats are flawless. Zero drop frames, nothing. So it is it is quite a surprise to me. No 
None may steal our oh, that looks pretty bad. None may steal our Are you kidding? damage at this point. I'd rather save sap for an actual big creature. Battle! Crush! No. Here we go. 